Hi, thank you all for joining me today. I'm Sarah Herlinger, and I lead Apple's Global Accessibility Policy and Initiatives team. For context, I'm a Caucasian woman with reddish blonde hair. I'm wearing a purple shirt and brown glasses, and I'm sitting in a yellow room. It's a real pleasure to be back at TDI's conference. I'm always honored to be asked to be a part of this great event. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about the latest powerful features that we build into a range of products, including iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, AirPods, and others, to support the needs of the deaf and hard of hearing and assist customers in protecting, managing, and educating themselves about their hearing health. We've been quite busy here at Apple, so there's a lot to talk about. But first, I'd like to give a bit of background on our design philosophy. Apple believes that the most powerful technology is designed for everyone. And we build our products with accessibility in mind, so devices adjust to the way people work, not the other way around. We do this by fostering a culture of inclusion, where accessibility is encouraged from the start and focused on through specific design practices. The first of which is that we build accessibility into the core of our products, the operating systems. We don't rely on third parties to do it for us, and we don't build it on as an afterthought. It's a part of Apple's DNA that as we design our products, we try and think about how anyone who would want to use them has the opportunity to do so. Regardless of how you choose to use Apple technology, our goal is to make as many types of assistive technology available as possible and to make them built in so they are available right out of the box as soon as you turn the device on. Secondly, we work to create a cohesive ecosystem. We're the only company that controls its own hardware, software, and operating systems, and we can infuse accessibility in, in ways others may not even be thinking about, to enable features you know and love to be available to you across our product lines. We don't have separate teams coming up with completely different user experiences for each of our operating systems. We have one team that focuses on accessibility across all that we do. And by continuing to iterate year over year with those principles in mind, we've created a wealth of accessibility features to support a wide range of user needs. So how does designing for everyone manifest in actual features? Well, let's explore some of our latest work. Let's start with made for iPhone hearing aids and sound processors. Apple initially created the Bluetooth technology for made for iPhone hearing aids to solve for one single problem. How to make a phone call a great experience for a hearing aid wearer. We were the first company to create a Bluetooth LE protocol to support a direct connection between hearing aids and iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch. And we've worked with top hearing aid manufacturers to embed this technology in over 175 models of hearing aids and sound processors. This program provides crystal clear sound for phone calls, FaceTime calls, music and movies, as well as additional features to enable further control of MFI hearing devices. And in a significant update to the MFI hearing devices program, Apple is adding support for new bi-directional hearing aids. The microphones in these new hearing aids enable those who are deaf or hard of hearing to have hands-free phone and FaceTime conversations. These next-generation models from MFI partners are scheduled to be available later this year. One of the additional features Apple created when an MFI hearing device was connected to an iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch is called Live Listen. With Live Listen, one can use the microphone of an iOS device as a directional mic. So when, for example, a speaker talks into a paired iPhone, the Live Listen user can hear the speaker directly from their MFI hearing aids. This is a great feature for noisy environments in general. So we also brought this feature to AirPods Max and AirPods Pro. So let's say you're in a meeting and sitting in the back of the room. You can set your iPhone on the podium or near the presenter and through your AirPods, hear that speaker more clearly. This is a great example of a feature designed for hearing aid wearers, but with great applicability for all. So we brought it to the mainstream with AirPods. And now let's talk about some more features. The first is Conversation Boost. Conversation Boost is a new feature for AirPods Pro designed to help people stay more connected in conversations when in crowded or noisy environments. Through computational audio and beam-forming microphones, Conversation Boost focuses AirPods Pro on the person talking in front of you, making it easier to hear and follow along in a face-to-face -face conversation. And to help you hear the conversation even better, you can also reduce the amount of ambient noise. 
You can also limit the maximum headphone volume of music and videos to protect your hearing with reduced loud sounds on your device. Connect EarPods, AirPods, and other compatible headphones to your iPhone. Go to Settings, Sounds and Haptics, and Headphone Safety. Turn on Reduce Loud Sounds to limit the sound level to which your headphones will go. Helpful details are listed against each decibel number to give an understanding of how loud you are setting the level to. So for example, 75 decibels is as loud as a vacuum cleaner. 80 decibels is as loud as a noisy restaurant. 85 decibels, as loud as heavy traffic. 90, as loud as a motorcycle. 95, as loud as a car horn. And 100 decibels, as loud as an ambulance siren. The headphone audio levels are automatically sent to health. And you can select to have headphone notifications to be turned on. This will let you know if you've gone past safe exposure limits based on guidelines set by the World Health Organization. And you will receive a notification if you go through this limit. The volume is automatically turned down on the device when this comes up. In some regions, this is set on by default as it is set as a government requirement. You can also monitor and access headphone levels through Live Listen in Control Center. Customize Control Center to add hearing and then access Live Listen when headphones are connected. You can then increase the amplification or push the balance to left or right ears. Apple Watch acts as another way to collect environmental sound levels. Pair Apple Watch with your iPhone, then set up the Noise app on Apple Watch. Environmental sound levels are automatically sent from Apple Watch to Health. It uses the microphone to detect the decibels around you and can notify you if the sound in your environment reaches a level that could impact your hearing over time. The same headphone safety features that are on iPhone and iPad are also available to you on Apple Watch. In settings, you can turn on and set up your noise app. And sound recognition. Built to support the deaf and hard of hearing communities, sound recognition uses on-device intelligence to notify users who might otherwise miss audible environmental alerts around them. Your iPhone can continuously listen for certain sounds, such as a crying baby, doorbell, or siren, and notify you when it recognizes these sounds. This is great for individuals who are deaf or hard of hearing, but also beneficial to others who may identify just as having situational hearing loss. For many, as they sit on calls with AirPod Pros in and noise canceling on, they are unable to hear the environmental sounds around them, but by having sound recognition turned on, they can be notified when things like the doorbell rings. Notifications for sound recognition will appear as lock screen alerts or banners on your screen when the sound is recognized. And you can use Control Center to easily access and toggle sound recognition on and off as you may require it. And sign language prominence in FaceTime. Available on Mac, iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch, FaceTime detects when you are using sign language in group FaceTime calls and will automatically make you prominent. Headphone accommodations amplify soft sounds and adjust certain sound frequencies so you can tune for your individual hearing to help music, phone calls, and more sound crisp and clear. This is available on AirPods Pro, as well as some other models of AirPods and Beats. Setting up headphone accommodations is an easy process that can all be done natively on device. Just make sure you have your AirPods or AirPods Pro paired to the device before you begin. You'll walk through a series of listening tests that allow you to set up unique profiles based on your personal sound preferences. This creates a personalized sound output for you to use when listening to media and making FaceTime or phone calls. You can also customize sound output based on an audiogram. There are third-party apps such as Mimi Hearing Test and SoundCloud that can provide an audiogram to be added to health data. And with iOS 15, you can easily input paper or PDF audiograms. Here's an example of how you input a paper one. Just go to Headphone Accommodations, tap on Custom Audio Setup, choose Add an Audiogram, and then select Camera as your source. 
hold your iPhone over the paper audiogram to position the document in the camera's view, and it will automatically capture the data and import it. Confirm the results, and they're added to headphone accommodations. The Health app can also store a range of relevant information. If you go to the Health app and tap the Browse button, you see a range of health categories. Tap into the Hearing section and scroll down to see all the setting options. Environmental sound levels, headphone audio levels, audiogram, noise notifications, and more knowledge about hearing health. First, let's tap into environmental sound levels. While using earphones or headphones with iPhone, you can use Hearing and Control Center to check your headphone audio level and the sound level of your environment. This is automatically populated in your health app. You can see data from the hour, the day, the week, the month, and the year. Similarly, headphone audio levels, showing how loud sounds are playing into your ears, are also tracked across the same time ranges, hour, day, week, month, and year. If you have an audiogram, the information is populated here. You can see the third-party apps that you have given access to write data to the Health app, and tap into the data sources and access information to see where the audiogram is being pulled from, and the specific data points as they were identified during testing. See what decibel levels can be heard at what sound range by both left and right ears. Noise notifications shows when Apple Watch has notified you of being in too loud an environment, and shows the noise dose you receive from the time it started to ending. Anything over 30 minutes may cause hearing damage, so being able to bring up this data and review it is important for reflection on environmental sounds around you, especially if this is an environment you're in on a daily basis. And finally, find further details on hearing health, understanding hearing loss, and other valuable and interesting information shared to help educate you on why it is important to use these features and track this data proactively to make good choices around your hearing. I'd also like to take a few minutes to talk about some other accessibility features that might be of interest to the deaf-blind community and those who might also have a physical motor limitation. We'll start with VoiceOver, Apple's industry-leading screen reader. VoiceOver describes what's happening on your iPhone, iPad, Mac, Apple Watch, Apple TV, or iPod Touch, so you can navigate just by listening or by using one of the 80-plus refreshable Braille displays that VoiceOver supports. Within VoiceOver, there's a feature called VoiceOver Recognition that uses machine learning and on-device intelligence so your iPhone can automatically improve the accessibility of text, apps, and images. Text recognition will speak descriptions of text found in images, and screen recognition makes apps more accessible by automatically detecting more on-screen controls to help you navigate. And lastly, image descriptions will describe images and photos within apps and on the web in full sentences. And now users can explore even more details about the people, text, table data, and other objects within images. VoiceOver can describe a person's position along with other objects within images, or navigate a photo of a receipt like a table by row and column complete with table headers. And another feature is called People Detection. Built into Magnifier, People Detection is a perfect example of how Apple's thoughtful design of both hardware and software come together to make a revolutionary feature to support the blind and low vision communities. The idea for people detection originally came from a single employee who was blind, talking about how he just wanted to know when a line moved. And so a group of employees started working collaboratively across multiple teams to find a solution. Originally envisioned to solve for everyday things like commuting or shopping, it became far more important as social distancing became a part of our world over 2020. So we worked to fast track the project and get this out in iOS 14. So how does it work? Well, a key element of our AR kit is a feature called people occlusion, which detects people in the camera field of view and estimates how far away a person is. The introduction of the LiDAR scanner on iPhone 12 Pro, iPhone 12 Pro Max, and iPad Pro 
took people occlusion to the next level by increasing the accuracy. And when you combine the cutting-edge LiDAR scanner with the powerful depth frameworks in iOS and iPadOS and the years of people understanding developed with ARKit, we're able to power people detection in Magnifier for real-time information about people in your vicinity. You can use it while you're stationary or in motion. If more than one person is detected, feedback is on the closest person, and feedback is available in a voice readout of distance or through your Braille display, an audio tone of your threshold distance, haptic feedback, and a visual readout on the screen. It's a valuable tool to support health and safety, but also just to help with day-to-day -day activities. And if you're someone with limited mobility, there's Assistive Touch for Apple Watch. Assistive Touch for Watch OS enables users with upper body limb differences to enjoy the benefits of Apple Watch without ever having to touch the display or controls. Using built-in motion sensors like the gyroscope and accelerometer, along with the optical heart rate sensor and on-device machine learning, Apple Watch can detect subtle differences in muscle movement and tendon activity, which lets users navigate a cursor on the display through a series of hand gestures, like a pinch or a clench. Assistive touch on Apple Watch enables customers who have limb differences to more easily answer incoming calls, control an on-screen motion pointer, and access notification, control center, and more. And I'll show a quick video to give you an idea of how this works. Designed for individuals with limb differences, assistive touch is controlled through gestures, like clenching and pinching. An Apple Watch on a person's wrist. For example, to stop a timer, double clench to activate assistive touch. Pinch your index finger and thumb to move focus to the stop button, then clench to confirm. In some applications, you can also use these gestures to perform quick actions. For example, to answer a call, you can double clench to immediately pick up. A call connects. There are also additional controls for more complex navigation, like ending a workout. Double clench to bring up the action menu, pinch to move focus to the motion pointer, and clench to confirm. Now you can move your arm to hover the pointer over the edge to scroll the page. Then hover over the end button to stop the workout. The motion pointer can also be activated by simply shaking your hand. So that's assistive touch. With this new feature, we're able to open the doors to Apple Watch for even more people in a way that hasn't been possible before. An Apple Watch logo. These same gestures are also available to voiceover users, as we know that that one-handed use case can also apply to someone using a cane or a service animal. Now, let's talk a little bit about the extended Apple ecosystem. Beyond just the specific accessibility features and products, there are many other ways that we're working to make additional products, services, and resources more valuable to the deaf and hard of hearing communities. Because we know that the power of designing with everyone in mind doesn't stop with just our products. It's about infusing accessibility in everything we do. For example, we know that representation matters, so in 2019, we put in a proposal to the Unicode Consortium to add disability-focused emojis to the global lexicon. We wanted greater representation, not just on our operating systems, but available for all. Now, 13 emojis supporting communities of the blind, deaf, and physical motor are available. But we didn't stop there. Being able to properly create your own unique Memoji, which may include things like hearing aids or sound processors, is important for acceptance and inclusion. So we've made them options for customization. And you can mix and match the ears on which they can be worn. And then there's Apple TV+. Plus. Apple TV Plus features critically acclaimed Apple original shows and movies available on the Apple TV app across devices. Apple's originals support subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing in 41 languages available in all countries where Apple TV Plus is available. They also support audio descriptions in nine languages and have made them available in Dolby Atmos to provide the best sound experience possible to the blind community. And for members of the deaf-blind community, Apple supports the delivery of caption tracks to supported Braille displays, making content additionally accessible. Just go to Media Descriptions in the VoiceOver Rotor and choose between Braille, Speech, or both. And Apple Fitness Plus, a fitness experience for everyone, powered by Apple Watch. 
All Apple Fitness Plus workouts provide closed captioning so you can follow along with all your favorite trainers. Our stores are designed to be accessible as well, not just in terms of the physical space, but in the training for all of our employees to ensure that customers with disabilities are treated with the same dignity and respect as anyone else who comes through our doors. These are just some of the ways we think beyond product and into everything we do. Lastly, a couple of resources for you. One, apple.com slash accessibility is our main site where you can find out more about all the things I've talked about today and much, much more. Secondly, accessibility at apple.com. This is our customer facing email address to which we get a lot of email every day, asking us questions, providing feedback, reporting bugs, etc. Please feel free to contact us there if you need anything. We greatly appreciate the dialogue we have with members of the communities we support. And lastly, Apple recently launched a new service called SignTime. This enables customers to communicate with AppleCare and retail customer care by using American Sign Language in the U.S., British Sign Language in the U.K., or French Sign Language in France, right in their web browsers. Customers visiting Apple Store locations can also use sign time to remotely access a sign language interpreter without booking ahead of time. Sign time has initially launched in the U.S., U.K., and France, with it plans to expand to additional countries in the future. So that's it for our session today. Thank you all for taking the time to learn more about Apple's work to support individuals who are deaf and hard of hearing. Have a great rest of your day.